Hey, how's it going? I'm Derek Kirk of Effectatron, and today, first off, does anybody else have this problem where when you open up some 40, this box just jumps around? This just started. Uh, so if you have a fix for that, let me know in the comments below. I've checked the max on app and stuff. I don't have an update or anything, and I've updated my drivers, but this is such a starting happening today. I don't know. We're going to create this cool kind of bubbly abstract art where we have this shape that kind of is billowing out of sort of a cage that we've created this kind of this cool geometric shape. So I'm going to show you how to create that and use the new balloon sim because the new sims are really cool and they work really well and it's like just really easy to make really neat looking stuff. So I think it's a fun little beginner project to do for sure. So let's go ahead and get started. So we just have our studio site set up with some of our lighting and stuff set up. It's very similar to my infinite floor tutorial if you want to know how to set it up. Uh, go ahead and check that video out. Uh, also, this is scene when we're completed is going to be available for download on Gumroad so you can have this exact setup for yourself. It will be render ready. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is thank my patrons. Thank you guys so much. Uh, it means a lot for all the support you guys are. If you want to support the channel, this is a really great way to do it. All those people, all of you that have liked and subscribed and, you know, st stuck around on the channel and commented and joined the Discord. I mean, we have like 100, over 150 people in there now. You guys are fantastic. It's been great getting to know all of you. And it's just been a really nice, positive community to be a part of and just a cool, safe place for artists to just, you know, talk and chill and, you know, learn at the same time. But also, um, everybody that's giving me money on Gumroad and stuff, it's just, you guys, just thank you so much i i as you know i've mentioned in a lot of my videos i struggle with a lot of self-doubt and imposter syndrome and stuff and that includes um teaching and thinking that i can do this and stuff and i and i just need to say it out loud it's going well you guys like keep proving like building me up right and and thank you so much and i hear you and i'm not gonna keep just complaining and, and talking down like i you guys have been so helpful it means a lot and I'm just going to keep giving you more content and we're going to start getting into workshops where I'm going to actually get to interact with you guys and stuff and teach you live one on one training, group training, things like that when really a slow down focused pace and sort of focused content rather than just generic tutorials. So be on the lookout for when that comes out. That's coming out very soon. So, yeah, we're it's, it's going to be cool. I'm going to launch. There's, there's stuff in the works. So thank you guys so much. Uh, for all the support and it just means a lot okay back to, to the to the intro thing okay so what we're going to do is we're going to create our little cage this geometric shape cage really quickly. So you think maybe we're going to do a sphere with displacement, uh, but there's actually an easier way to do that kind of same shape. And it's actually to use a landscape. So click and hold this square, go down to landscape and we'll raise this up a little bit. And in case you didn't know it, there's a little icon here down here that you can check, which instantly creates a spherical landscape, kind of cool creation of a displaced sphere, just like that. And so the cool part is we can go ahead and turn our roughness values all the way up and our fine furrows all the way up as well. But we're going to take our but we're going to take our width segments all the way down to 20. OK, and then what we're going to do is we are going to have this landscape selected. Click and hold the subdivision surface icon and then hold alt and let go over the polygon reduction. And so this polygon reduction is going to create this shape. And this may be a little too low poly for us. So let's go in here and increase this up to like 25, maybe 24. And the cool thing is it's going to update that for us. So this looks like a pretty good geometric shape. So what we're looking for here is where these lines are, because where these lines are are where our poles are going to be and where our faces are are where our holes are going to be. And the way we're going to create that effect is actually to let's go ahead and select our polygon reduction. And what we're going to do is we're going to go down here and click and hold on the same icon we did before, the subdivision surface. And we're going to go down to Atom Array and let go while we're holding Alt. And instantly that creates this kind of cage effect of our shape. So what we can do is we can increase the radius of these, the sphere and the cylinder. Just make sure that the cylinder and the sphere are the same. Otherwise, you're going to have these little dots uh, where these spheres can meet, which you could do if you wanted, but I don't think they're looking. So we're going to go ahead and say eight and eight. And you may notice we don't have a lot of subdivisions here, uh, especially going this way. So kind of an issue there. So what we want to do is we want to go ahead and right click this atom array. 
and we're going to go to connect objects and delete because we're reckless like that. We're going to we're going to commit to this shape. And so that's going to go ahead and make that geometry for us editable. And so now what we can do is go to the polygon mode, hold hit control A to select all the faces, hit U, shift S. That's going to pull up the subdivide window for us. And what we're going to do is we're going to make sure smooth subdivisions is on. And then for iterations, we're going to say three. And we say, OK. And now you can see that's added a bunch of geometry to our scene. Maybe overkill, but it's going to be fine because we don't have a whole lot of objects in our scene. So the reason we wanted to add a bunch of geometry to our scene is because we're going to use uh, collision dynamics. And dynamics work really well the more polygons you have. When you start having big polygons, um, sometimes you can get stuff clipping through things and stuff like that. And I don't know what that was, but if you have stuff clipping through stuff, um, sometimes you can fix that problem by just making all your faces smaller so then they hit those edges a little better. Okay, so now we have this selected. What we want to do is with our landscape selected, we're going to right click and we're going to go to simulation tags, not bullet tags, simulation tags, and go to collider, this little hanger icon. Okay, because that's what clothes go on as a hanger. Okay, we've got our cage created. So now we need to create our sphere, balloon it, and then, you know, create this intersection where they're going to create this cool little puffs through these little holes. Okay, so what we're going to do is create a sphere. And we're going to bring that sphere up right in the middle of our cage here. We're going to make it a little bigger, like 275. Um, we don't want it to be intersecting anything. So just make sure it's not clipping through anything. And then what we want to do is we want to increase the segments to 256. Uh, again, because... You know, the collisions are going to be better the more polygons we have. It's going to take a little longer to run the sim, but we're still going to get that effect we want with this. Now, if we were doing just a pure cloth sim, uh, we might get away with less segments just to kind of get that flowy look. Um, but for now, this is what we're going to do. And then for the type, we could do a hexahedron. You, normally, you don't want to run a standard type for um, dynamics for this reason. When you look at the top of this, you see you have a whole lot more polygons at the poles of your sphere than you do on the side. So basically, you're going to have, it's going to react differently on the poles than it is on the sides. And that's not really what you want. Uh, so we want it to act uniformly across the whole thing. So one way is hexahedron, uh, which provides quads, which is really good. But you can still see there's still some pattern to these. And there's still some areas that it's a little tighter than there are. In other areas. So what we could do is do an uh, icosahedron, uh, which is triangles and not quads, but these triangles are going to be evenly distributed uh, across our entire sphere. So this is going to be exactly what we want. Kind of looks like the Epcot ball in Disney. Uh, so let's go ahead and so now that our sphere is set up, we can go ahead, right click, go to or simulation tags and then balloon. And just so we're clear, there's not really uh, that big of a difference between cloth Cloth, soft body, and balloon are all the exact same simulator, just different presets enabled from the start. So if we go to balloon, you'll see we have surface, balloon, soft body. We have the same things we have with the cloth and other sims. So keep that in mind, but it does create a nice little balloon icon for us that makes me think of it sometimes, which is scary. Um, but yeah. So let's go ahead and leave these settings how they are, except our friction, we're going to change up to one because we wanted to hit our sides and stick and not like slide past it. We just wanted to create that bulge uh, rather than, you know, slip through it. So what we want to do is go into our collider body here in our landscape and make sure in our collider tag, we have our friction set to one as well in that. Okay, so you can see we have our balloon settings set to overpressure of one and expansion time of 30 seconds, which means for 30 seconds, it's going to provide one overpressure. Now, before we run this sim, we need to set up our scene and our simulation settings in our scene. So what we want to do is hit control D that opens up your project panel here. And inside of that, we have a simulation tab inside the simulation tab. We want to go to the scene tab. So now we want to make sure that we're set on GPU. So we're using our GPU to drive this simulation. And then that way it's going to be like faster playback. It's just going to work better, especially if you have like an RTX card. Then we want to make sure our gravity is set to zero. And the reason we want that is because we want this to balloon out and we don't want it to balloon out and then droop down like gravity's pulling it down. We don't, we don't want gravity to affect this. So gravity is zero. If you do want gravity to affect your scene realistically, it is negative eight 
981 centimeters, I think. Negative 981 centimeters is what gravity is. You can correct me if I'm wrong, please, in the comments. Uh, but leave a like. Uh, okay, so, so we've got that set up. Now we need to go into our simulation tab inside of our simulation tab. So the simulation in a simulation. Um, so let's go ahead and for the sub steps, uh, what I've found and what I've seen other people do and stuff is kind of the sweet spot for a nice floaty cloth is somewhere between 10 and 15. Uh, when you start getting higher and above 20, your cloth kind of stiffens up. Uh, so there's obviously circumstances where that's going to be what you want. But for us, we're going to go with 12. And then for iterations, two, smoothing iterations, two, and then dampening, we're going to go with 20 as well. And basically all dampening is is kind of like um, feathering the effect somewhat. Uh, so it's just kind of like, rather than it being like, bam, it's going to be like, bam. <laughs> it's just kind of make it so it's not so intense, right? So this is going to have a little ease into it a little bit. And then for our collisions, we're going to do 20 passes and 20 extra iterations. Um, I think this works well, and this is really more dependent on uh, the geometry you have in your scene than this is what I found. And, you know, I wish that I could tell you what these numbers meant, but they just seem so arbitrary. I have no idea if 20 is a lot. It's higher than the default value. Uh, I don't know if 20 is, you know, like way too many. I don't know if 200 is a good amount. Like, I don't, there's no slider or anything. So I'm not sure, but 20 works well for this scene, okay? Uh, so let's go ahead and get that going. And we can hit play, and nothing happens. Uh, that is because we have our balloon set to an overpressure of one, which isn't really an overpressure at all. That's just pressure of one. So basically it's saying over the 30 frames, I'm going to give myself a pressure value of 100% fullness. That's what that means. So if you start going above one, now you're gonna start filling it up. And it's gonna start blowing up. And if you go below one, I think it'll it'll it won't be quite as full. You know, it'll be kind of like it deflated a little bit. So what I ran a lot of tests with this scene before making this tutorial, I kept trying to overpressure and do like three or four and really balloon this up through the cage. And honestly, I ran into more issues doing it that way because what happens is when we balloon our sphere up, all of our polygons get stretched out as well. And so then it's not quite as high poly. Technically, it's the same amount of polygons, but then our object's bigger. So the ratio of polygons to surface area is different. If that makes sense. Uh, so what I found out that actually works better then ballooning this up is actually taking the cage and crushing it down and squishing our balloon, but leaving the balloon pressure at one. So it's going to try to keep its same volume while being crushed by our cage, right? So let's go ahead and grab our landscape object, which is our cage. We go to go to frame zero. We're going to go to coordinates and we're going to go ahead and say keyframe. And that's going to do our scale and everything here. We're going to go to frame 48. Then we're going to type in over here in the S, 0 0.7, 0 0.7, 0 0.7. And click, click, click. So we have all solid red here. And so you can see that that cage is smaller than our sphere. So what this is going to do is it's going to collapse in and be smaller than our sphere here. Actually, we're going to move this. If you don't know how to move things in your timeline, you click in this very small window of inside these dots and drag till you have it highlighted. And then you can click and move that over. It's a, a really narrow window to get that right. I click here, too low, too low, too high. Right in there is a sweet spot. Okay, so we're going to drag that down to 24 just to kind of speed this up a little bit. So now if we go back to frame zero, full size cage, we hit play. We'll hit save, we'll hit play on this animation. Our cage is going to start shrinking and it's going to start squishing our sphere, but our sphere isn't just going to collapse because it's trying to keep a pressure of one all the way up through frame 30. So you can see we're left with this pretty cool little effect where we've kind of got these balloon things coming up and you can see we start getting these ones here or start to kind of dominate. So basically what's happening is, do you remember those little squeezy, squishy balls? They're, they had the mesh around them and they were like colored and full of like gel. They were like stress balls. 
and you could squish them and they would squish the ball through the mesh and create all these little bubbles just like this and you could like push it down. Anyway, that's what's happening. It's basically there's there's finding one and it's saying, oh, well, I have a lot less pressure here. So it's going to be like and just allow itself to just balloon out through there, and push all this pressure out of this um, bubble butt here. So there's not really a way to counter that uh, besides kind of moving your cage around and stuff and maybe moving some geometry around. But basically it's saying that one is kind of the biggest opening. So it's going to be able to, to slide out of that. Um, so what we're going to do is we're just going to pause it before that point, right? Because we're just creating a still here anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, we could lower the pressure and stuff if you think that that's creating any issues, but we'll see here. So here we're at like 24. I think if we hit pause right now on frame 28, we have a pretty good, pretty good scene here. There we go. So pretty cool, little abstract effect done easily. Uh, now you could come in here, you could turn off your landscape if you wanted to, and you're left with just kind of this cool shape. Um, but the main thing we're gonna do right now is we're just gonna go ahead and take our scene and go down to like 32, and we're gonna have our balloon selected, and we're gonna order cache, and we're just gonna get cache mode, and then cache the scene. What the cache is doing is it's baking our sim, so it's not gonna go like calculate the frames, every frame of the sim. Uh, so this way we'll be able to just scrub through our timeline. It's gonna bake it this one time. It won't have to run the sim again, okay? But also if you make any changes, they're not gonna affect it until you free the cache. So right now we can just, you see we're just getting this nice effect here. So we can go to whatever time point we want where we like the way it looks. Okay, so now we actually have this baked and cached. One thing we can do is take our sphere and hold alt and click subdivision surface and that's just gonna smooth that out even more. So if you follow me uh, at all, you normally know that I wrap up all my videos in one video. But for this one, I think I'm gonna split it up into two because I think it's so cool looking and it's a really great beginner project and it's a really cool one to post on Instagram and stuff like that. So what's really gonna make this look even cooler is if you can create um, a cool texture, like a nice cloth or something like that, and to throw that on there as well. So I'm gonna show in the next video how to how to light this, um, how to um, render, render it out with all the right render settings and stuff like that. And I'm also going to show how to create a couple different materials, including how to create uh, textured fabric and cloth, um, all within Cinema 4D. So for now, we have this really cool sort of bubbly blob coming out of our shape here, but what's really gonna set this off is adding some really cool materials on here. And just the combination of these is just gonna create some really nice looking dynamic art and stuff like that. And obviously to change the you know geometry here, all you gotta do is when you're doing your landscape is just change the seed and you can just instantly create different, completely different looking ones with the change of a, of a button. So a really cool way to do that. So be sure to like, subscribe, and follow. It means a lot. And ring that bell if you want to know when part two comes out where we're going to create um, some of these materials that you see here. Okay? Thank you guys so much for watching. Again, big thanks to my patrons and everybody. Uh, be sure to check out DerekKirk.net for more content and materials. Thank you guys. See you next time.